Dr. Shaw, it gives me great pleasure, and I'm so privileged to be able to do this today, uh, introduce the impossible girl, Jenna scariest Doctor Who episodes ever. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You haven't seen it? It's not come out here. Oh, that's a shame. It's a bit quite wonderful. To silence across the room. Did you have a sense of fear? Did you think it was scary when you read that particular script? Yeah, but actually, so this is the episode flatline that you're... you're when, when, what day does it come here? Oh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. I won't give too much away then, but this is the episode that you will see tomorrow, which is effectively about killer graffiti. Um, but it was one of those filming the episodes where it was all CGI, so you actually can't see anything, so you have to invent the fear and imagine um, that things are coming after you, and in reality, it's like a tennis ball or, um, or nothing. Have you seen the final result? No, I haven't. I've been here, so I haven't, I haven't seen it either. I think you'll pass on to the fans. Oh, sorry. Yes, first question to Jenna. Hello, nice scarf. <laughs> Where are the AV gentlemen, the ladies? Microphone on route. Oh, oh, it's working. <laughs> um, my question is. So Doctor Who has a lot of like props and sets and costumes that are really cool and really unique and I was wondering what your favourite of them were. Okay, I've got a little bit in trouble. I need to be careful how I approach this. Basically, there's something on the TARDIS which is my favourite, which because they're Gallifreyan balls that come out of the TARDIS set and then you can kind of juggle with them and, and play and like throw them at Peter and um <laughs> And also, you, you find that the screens on the TARDIS, you can spin them round, and it's like a, it's like a game. <laughs> so I enjoy that. And also, I don't know if you've seen the squidgy um, telepathic circuit. Yeah, that's that's quite fun. It, that was supposed to be filled with goop, but that hasn't happened yet. The goop's on its way from America, apparently. <laughs> but it's, not, it's impossible to be on the TARDIS without... Um, without playing with things, like you can't stop touching the buttons. And also, having the mini TARDIS in my handbag in tomorrow's episode that you'll see was, was very fun. Spoilers! <laughs> we all, I mean, there's been adverts. We know it's a tiny TARDIS, I hope. <laughs> uh, another question, please. Oh, say that again, sorry? I started working on the show <laughs> and I very quickly fell in love with this mad and wonderful world that I knew nothing about before. Um, but that's what happens, it kind of takes a hold of you. Before you got into Doctor Who, did you dip into the show at all or was it completely new? No, but it's in, in, in the UK, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it's on the tube and the posters are everywhere. It's kind of part of the, it's very much part of the culture over there. But it was never on when I was a child, so what, I'm what, on one of what we call the denied children in the UK. Um, so I, I, missed, I missed that, but I was always aware of who the doctors were and who the assistants were because it's kind of in your psyche, I suppose. As an actress at the back of your mind, did you ever think, possibly? No, not really. It, it's, um, you, the audition came through and it was kind of, it was a real, it was a real surprise. And, you know, I remember my agent saying, um, well, first off, she said you're auditioning for something called Men on Waves, a.k.a. Um, Doctor Who, but if you tell anyone, the sky will fall down. So keep it a secret. Um, and it was one of those of, okay, that would be kind of fun, but, you know, it's going to be a really long, old... Um, audition circuit and you know that we've seen loads of people it was kind of something that I just was like cool I get to go meet Matt and have a fun audition and um, I, I kind of didn't really overthink it <laughs> unlike me there we go hi hello hi 
always wondered what you found the main differences being between filming with men and filming with Tasha. Oh, um, I have to say, the show is totally different. It, it feel, it, it's kind of incomparable really, because you just feel like you're filming a different show. Um, but the scripts are very, very different, and you know, we've been doing these longer scenes, so the format is quite different, you know, like in, um, in Deep Breath, the restaurant sequence, which is like about 15 pages long, which is kind of something new that Stephen's been, um, been trying this series. So, the energy is quite different. I suppose, I think the main difference is the doctors is, is Matt's doctor will go to the room and you kind of, you kind of like dive in where you can, whereas Peter's doctor kind of is a lot more still and he'll make the room come to him. So it's, it's a different energy, I think. So working between the two is really interesting. But it's the same on the 50th, it's, you know, working between three different doctors and each one has, has such a different um, energy, I suppose. Lovely, another question, please. Hi. Hello. Who's that? Where are you coming from? Oh, here. Hello. Hello. No. Um, this is a question from a friend of mine over in Canada. Okay. Um, she wants to know, have you ever been, um, had the slightest bit of envy towards other, the recent companions, most notably um, Amelia Pond? <laughs> I mean, she has really tall legs, and I, it's quite hard to not get envious of that. It's quite funny if me and Karen ever have a chat, actually, just like the two of us together, height difference. Um, but I think, oh, there's lots, really. I mean, I thought she had a really beautiful story of her meeting the Doctor as a child, and I don't know, I'm feeling pretty lucky. You're yeah, very lucky you're the only companion who's ever been with every single Doctor. <laughs> Another question, please. Um, this kind of relates to what you just said. What's it like being the impossible girl who has been with every doctor? Because other companions have come and gone, but Clara's been literally everywhere. I love it. I mean, I, I tell you what was really special. I was doing those scenes with William uh, Hartnell and, and recreating that set and going back to like, like one of those first scenes. That bit felt like really... Um, Special and being part of the 50th with John Hurt, meeting Tom Baker. It's, it's, um, yeah, I'm just really great. I'm really grateful to Stephen, and it, it feels like she knows him really well because she's known all of his incarnations. So that's a really nice um, thing in their dynamic and their relationship, which is nice to play. Lovely. Another question, please. Hi, Diana. Hello. Um, when you were in school, did you want to be an actress? I did. I did from a very, a very, very young age. So I used to do all the. Um, I was very lucky because the school I went to did lots of plays, and then we used to travel with the plays up to um, like festivals and um, play lots of different parts and things like that. So I was always doing it from a very young age. Lovely. Another question, please. Hi, Vivian. I'm Vivian. Hello, Vivian. Vivian. Um, so. I wonder who you have lots and lots of gorgeous outfits and costumes because of all the time changes, changes and everything. So um, I was wondering what was your favourite costume that Clara was in? Mm, I have to say, I'm a big fan of Oswin and I love all the cosplay that people do. Because I just think, how many times in your life can you wear an egg whisk? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that outfit in particular is very fun, um, having like a, a utility belt. Um, and I also, in fact, the snowman, I really love the snowman costume. But it's great, you know, week to week to be able to kind of step into periods like that is really great. Um, do, you, do you have any say in the choosing of modern day Clara costumes? Yeah, it's more like we'll talk about, um, and I, we've been trying to adapt stuff for the episode as well, like often there's practicalities of how much do we have to run in this episode. Um, you know, how, are we going to be outdoors or, you know, so actually there's quite a bit of practicality in it. But also, I have to wear heels because if I don't, it's really hard to get me and Peter in the same shop. <laughs> so I actually have a box now, which is, which literally on set goes, um, okay, can, can we bring in Jenna's box, please? <laughs> and a box comes in that I have to stand on so me and Peter can be in the same shop. You're talking about Peter wandering off set at one point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should I tell that story? Okay. Um, so this is just what Peter does on... I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. Oh, well, it's in England, it's fine. <laughs> um, 
we had a night on a night shoot and we were in a power station and it's something we've realised that you can't leave Peter alone because he often goes for a little walk and then you don't know where he is and he's missing because he just likes to explore, he's quite doctor-like in that way. Um, so we were in a power station and there was about uh, 10 minutes and at the last 10 minutes of a day on set everyone goes into panic zone because it's, you know, we've got two shots and we've got 10 minutes so everybody needs to be quick and get it in the can. And um, so Peter goes missing and then suddenly I turn around, it's like 3am, 10 minutes to go, and he's soaking wet. <laughs> so I'm like, what is, where have you been? What have you been doing? And it turns out he got a little bit hungry, <laughs> so he decided to go for a walk to look for a pasty. Do you know what a pasty, you guys have pasties? Yeah. So he went to look for a pasty and found a big red button and decided to press it. <laughs> and it turns out it was a shower. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hello. I was just wondering, um, filming with Peter, is he much like his character? No. Not at all. I wish that you could actually see what goes on between the takes, because the two of us are like, are like absolute children. I'm not, I'm not kidding. We're absolutely pathetic. We do stupid, childish accents and voices to make ourselves giggle all day long and actually have to physically remove ourselves from each other at opposite ends of the set so we can get some work done, is how it goes. So he's nothing, and it's the same with, I don't know if anyone knows him, it's Malcolm Tucker from the thick of it. He's, you know, he's, he's the kindest, joyful, silliest man, which he is as the Doctor as well, but there's something more mythical and alien and removed about his doctor. So there's there's a real there's a real contrast between what he's what he's really like. Was it difficult uh, doing Matt's last scene? Yeah, yeah. It was funny. It was a really funny day. It's such a strange atmosphere, but I think it's because you're basically experiencing two big emotions at once, which is you know being really sad and moved and. Um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, I think, saying goodbye to one, one friend, but also equally in the same sentence, and the same scene, being really excited about, you know, the start of something else. So it's really, it is an incredibly, it's not a show that, that does it. It's, you know, it's, the, regen, the whole regeneration thing is such an unusual but amazing part of the show. Another question, please. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Hello. You're an amazing actress. Thank you very much. Um, uh, what was your favourite memory from behind the scenes with Matt filming that series? Oh my goodness, the whole series. Oh, there's so much. There's so much. And the, the great thing about it is that every day is different. And it's not just what you do on set either, you know. It's stuff like, you know, we get to travel together afterwards. You kind of, you're in this strange bubble with just the two of you. But he's generally just like really quite clumsy. Matt likes to wind me up a lot. That's like Matt's fun game. Matt's like an older big brother who will kind of be, be just doing this all day to like keep himself entertained. Or likes to hide and then jump out and scare you and um, yeah, he's, he's, he's quite, a, he's quite a, a tease. And he's very clumsy, so I kind of almost enjoy that karma <laughs> in the takes when he, when he fell over like during the hero shot and he's doing like the Doctor Who skid on the gravel and he looks really iconic and then he'll follow up with a fall. <laughs> And the funniest bit is he'll try to get up and pretend he's not hurt himself and then he'll hobble in the corner. <laughs> Lovely, another question please. Would you like a jelly baby? <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. 
Well, that's probably the funniest, actually, I think that's happened. It, it's just the two of us are... Mm, I can't think of anything, sorry, off the top of my head, but... Is he his legs? Yeah. Oh my god, I mean, the Doctor has to be. Because there are so many, and um, so much jargon. Sorry, this jelly baby's really chewy. <laughs> Go on. Uh, fire yeah. away. Yes. Um, you know how Matt Smith says always that his bow tie is cool? Yeah. What is your honest, honest to God opinion on bow ties? Do you actually have <laughs> No, no, no um, hesitation here. We no, need no, no. We need an answer. The first thing that ran through my head is, if I don't say it, they're cool, will Stephen Moffat fire me? <laughs> <laughs> bow ties are cool. Can I just say, when I was at school, my school uniform was a bow tie. Really? Yeah. Did you tell Matt Smith? No, I never told him that. You should tell him. I should tell him. Yes. So I, I actually, I actually was wearing the bow tie before Matt Smith. <laughs> The sales of bow ties rocketed when Smith took over as a doctor. Yeah. So that says something. I heard that. That actually came up. Does anybody follow um, Uber Facts on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. If you don't, you should because it's really interesting, random facts. And it, that came up on Uber Facts. And uh, yeah, on this side, sorry. Okay. Hi, Kitna. Hello. My name's Bridget, and I'm a huge fan of Doctor Who. I sincerely hope you have a great time in New Zealand. I am, thank you. I have two questions, if you don't mind answering them both. Okay. Question number one is for my friend in America. She wants to know who's better, Trump Doctor or Liam Doctor? <laughs> no! That is a forbidden question. That's like saying, who do you like better, your mum or your dad? <laughs> David Tennant. <laughs> You, that's, that's, that's the forbidden question. My second question is, what is your opinion on Doctor Who fan fiction? <laughs> Doctor Who fan fiction? Yeah. Are we talking about the dodges or the... <laughs> Like, I, 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 what I do see is a lot of pictures and, and inventive and really creative things that people make and draw, and, but I'm not very familiar with the fan fiction. It's just because I've got a yeah. bit of my story that I'm writing, would you like to have it? Yeah, absolutely. What? <laughs> so this is this a story that you've created? Oh, right, cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Stephen Moffat. <laughs> it says, says Virginia Coleman and Stephen Moffat. <laughs> I'll pass that on. Thank you. Thanks for answering my questions, and I hope you have a, loved, a lovely time in New Zealand. Thank you. Thanks very much. Oh, wasn't you lovely? <laughs> Another question, please. Hi, Jim. Um, Hello. I just want to say thank you for coming down to New Zealand. It's awesome. You're welcome. You're fantastic. Thank you. Um, I don't know about everyone else, but I love the scene in Hyde when you just save the Doctor out of the pocket universe and you swing out and you give him a high five. Yeah. And the chemistry is just awesome. Really? So that was my first day. That really? day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like my first day after Oswin. It was my first day. Yeah. Uh, well, I was wondering. So this question. Okay. I love that high five. I'm intrigued. I know it's coming. Are you going to ask? I know it's coming. Why'd you let me come up on stage and give you a high five? <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not an anti climax. <laughs> I'm missing the high 
guy. I should have slapped him in the face. <laughs> the last request for coming up on stage because we'll be here all day and we don't have all day. Um, how long have we got? To, have we still got time for a few more? Uh, more Lovely, yeah. Um, oh, that's I've been neglecting this. Um, hi, I'd like to say thank you so much for coming to New Zealand. Clara's my favourite companion so far and you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 One Doctor Who cast member and one prop that works. <laughs> Who and what and why? <laughs> mm. Obviously I take the Doctor. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of some way to cheat your question. I'm trying to think of some way of like some portal which is like Skype, so I can talk to my mum still, you know. The TARDIS! The TARDIS! That would be the clever one. The Doctor and the TARDIS. I mean, I feel it's a shame not to take straps along as well. You we just chop newspapers out of here. No. I like him though, he looks like a potato. There we go. That young chap there. Hello. Um, hello, um, Jenna. Hello. You seem to fluctuate between liking the Doctor and hating him. Like, in the first episode, you weren't a big fan of the Doctor because he was a bit older than Matt Smith. And, <laughs> and um, in Kill the Moon, he, he sort of abandoned you. Well, oh, not sort yes. of. He really did abandon you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and then you really hated him, and then you... Then he took me to that beach and you saw what was really going to happen and then you sort of... <laughs> and also, um, other cast members that you seem to hate in the show... Are they, are they actually that horrible in real life? <laughs> Travelling around the universe in time and space, it ain't all roses. This is what's going on in this series. But it's 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 a, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship, I'd say. And and he can only annoy her so much because she loves him so much. And 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 that's that's why he's he's very infuriating because he's he's alien. And she's a control freak. <laughs> also, I have um. One request, could you ask MacGyver to make me a nuclear <laughs> amount of the paper? Yes, I will drop it on you! <laughs> and can I take a close-up picture from you, um, of you from the stage? Um, stand there, you're not coming up or I'll punch okay. you. <laughs> could you drop that bomb for me? Very, you, what age are you? Ten, and you used the word fluctuate. <laughs> I know, from that word I was like, oh no, I'm in trouble here. <laughs> There's a lovely scene at the end of uh, Mummy and the Orient Express when you're on the phone to Danny Pink and you say very loudly, deliberately, I love you. Were you saying that to Danny or to the doctor? To the doctor. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that side. Hey. Oh, hello. Hello. This is before you start. I accidentally cosplayed Amy too today. <laughs> accidentally? It was an accident. You don't like at what well, I wear in Plotline. Not that I'm trying to take it. I mean, you know. I was trying to do it and then someone said I look like Amy. Oh, it's okay. My mum accidentally cosplayed as Clara at the last convention by accident. That was quite funny. <laughs> But, um, you, uh, Clara, plays as a school teacher, so have you ever thought about being a teacher or thought about any other career, or has it always been acting? It has, um, I'm afraid to say. Um, I did, I did, used to like archaeology when I was younger, I'm sorry, studying Egyptians, but that was very young, but yeah, I, I, it's something that I've always, I've just always loved doing and always, always wanted to do. I'd love to write as well, and I've always thought maybe, um, 
cast because you can just basically go to the theatre all the time and watch loads of films and use it as, as an excuse that I'll oh, working, but, you know, by like doing something that you love. Um, uh, yeah, what was the other question? Oh, it was just that, but yeah, I want to do that as well, and I took the archaeology when I was going to do it. Ah, like, well, you are like a character. <laughs> Good luck. Do you think Cleopatra is a figure in Earth's history that Clara would like to meet? Absolutely. Yeah, I've always said that's one, if I could go anywhere in time and space, nobody asked me this question, uh, I would go to Egypt. Oh, it's a weeping angel. Hello. Um, I'm Lily. That's Izzy behind me. We are Hello. fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were wondering who your favourite um, villain of all time is and who you think would be the easiest to defeat? Easiest to defeat? Um, I, hmm, I really like the silence. Um, I also like the Whisper Men, who I feel like people don't really mention very much, but it, I, it, the ones that scare me the most are the ones that come at you really slowly. Because I think there's something, there's a confidence in not having to chase you really fast because they know you, they're going to get you, which kind of really psychologically freaks me out. So it's those ones, of course, the Weeping Angels, <laughs> which are clearly your favourite, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. There we go, young Matt. Hello. Nice low tie. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask, what was it like on your first time on the TARDIS set? Um, it, do you know what? I actually filmed for about six months before I stepped foot on the TARDIS because the new TARDIS was being built when I joined. Um, the new TARDIS was being built when I joined, so um, we didn't have a TARDIS for ages and ages. Um, but the first time, you know, being inside the actual TARDIS, not the set TARDIS, I'm not ruining any magic here, but, but when you step inside the, the box, it's kind of, it's just like, a, like a, a wooden box, so there's often a lot of awkward moments, and there's no way to avoid it, because you're effectively stood in what feels like a cupboard in the dark, with somebody else, and often a guy with a smoke gun by your feet. Um, so that that's kind of takes some getting used to, and it took me some getting used to not trying to make small talk, you know? <laughs> you know, because you knew and you didn't know anyone, so you'd be stood there going, Oh, um, good lunch today, you know, <laughs> like four tapes and stuff. Um, so that's quite strange. But the actual walking onto the TARDIS um, was just really great, and you see the lights, and uh, so seeing the TARDIS for the first time in the snowman was actually my first day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There we go, another one again. Um, we all know that Doctor Who has lots of special effects and animation and stuff, which would make it very weird to act in film. Uh -huh. So what do you think the weirdest episode to actually act was? Well, my first two days in Asylum of the Dalek, um, Matt was never there, so I spent two days talking to a green circle, um, <laughs> which was supposed to be Matt. So that was an incredibly strange experience, and I did feel like I was kind of going a bit loony afterwards. Because you're just talking at, at like a, a wall, effectively, a green wall. Um, but we, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, I did um, a series set on Titanic, and I remember I had a shot to do, and I was looking at a paper cup, and the paper cup was the Titanic. And the Titanic that's sinking, you know, so you're reacting to this paper cup. It's, 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 an, incredibly, it's an incredibly strange part of the filming process, and, you know, things like a tennis ball on a stick that wobbles around is a pack of wolves and you have to follow it. You know, it's incredibly, um, it's just part of, part of filming, but it looks brilliant afterwards. Well, my friend time has run out. Aww. I know, I know, but the nasty man told me to get off. Nasty man? Yes. Where's that nasty man? So, please, ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the wonderful job. <laughs>